prophets, you believe that there are causal relations and connections between events. What secures that there are causal relations between events? Is it something fundamentally absolute or do you believe that by faith? Okay, when you were talking about something that you said was non-dependent, what do you mean? Yeah, something is absolute if it is fundamentally it exists and it doesn't begin to exist and it's non-dependent. In other words, it's not contingent. Okay, so you're saying, do I believe that there is something that something that exists now that never started to exist? Well, what I'm asking you is since you're asserting that athe uh, evidence is a viable concept in your atheistic outlook, evidence entails causal relations and connections between events. What ultimately and foundationally in your model of reality secures that? Do okay. you believe it by faith or do you have a rational justification? Yeah, so... In terms of, you know, we could go down a million rabbit holes here with, you know, we could look at what can we really know? We can look at, you know, go down the, the Cartesian rabbit hole of can we really know anything outside of, you know, cogito ergo sum? Ultimately, we cannot know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, you know, anything other than I exist because there is something here that is experiencing things around me, around us, right? Would so, you agree with no, that? I'm not, I'm not well, I'm not clear on your answer. Do you believe that there is I'm get, I'm getting there. something? Is there something fundamentally absolute or do you reject that? I'm, I'm getting there. Will you bear with me? Sure. Okay. So do you agree that, um, you know, what I said about uh, Descartes and aside from knowing that we exist, we can't technically know anything for certain. We could be a brain in a vat. We could be living in a simulation. We could, it could be possible that everything around us is just inside of our minds that Jamie doesn't actually exist. Like there's no way to tell beyond a shadow of a doubt. We can know beyond reasonable doubt. We can know based off of our experiences, what happens when, you know, if I hit Jamie right now mm -hmm. and he reacts negatively and everyone else reacts negatively and I end up I'm in not, prison. I'm not even I'm not even talking about that. I'm not talking about foundationally. Do you accept or not accept that there is some something fundamentally absolute and provides for all contingencies such as evidence and causality? I, I, I accept that there is something that exists in this world. And I accept... Okay. Is, it, is it? Yeah, I understand that. But is okay. that... I'm asking you... What is it? Do you believe that there is something fundamentally and foundationally absolute that is non-dependent that provides for all dependency states or contingencies? Because Jamie rejects that. I want to know, do you accept that or reject it? I, I think I know where you're going with this because I've heard this script before. But um, I would say that I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And the reason that I say that, and, I, and I've thought this through, the reason that I say that is because the universe exists. We know that. We, we know that something exists that we exist in. We know that there's something here. Okay. Wait a minute. You just said a minute ago that you don't know anything absolutely. No, I'm saying that's, we know absolutely that we exist. That's not what he said. Okay. So what I want to know is... So hear, hear, hear me out though because I, I was going somewhere with this. That's important. So I know that we exist in some way, shape, or form, whether it's consciousness, what, you know, whatever that means, there is something that exists. We have no evidence that there ever was not something. We don't have evidence that there ever was nothing to begin with. Yeah, we don't have... Understanding we don't No, I, I am understanding your question, but you're not letting no, me get to my conclusion. Okay. You're, you're interrupting me. Can, okay. can I finish this thought? Sure, but you're not understanding the question. Okay, so... If, if we know that something, we, we have no evidence of, of nothingness. We don't know that there is nothingness. We can look at a vacuum, but that's not nothingness. There may still be photons of light. There may still be radiation. There, you know, we have um, measured um, virtual I'm particles, happy. virtual particles popping in and out of existence. So we don't know what, you know, time and space, what space time is exactly. We don't know what nothingness looks like. So if we go far enough back to the Big Bang, we could say maybe the universe existed forever. Maybe it's going through cycles of... I'm not talking about cosmology. Okay, but, but I am. Because it's, cosmology well, ties, well, cosmology well, ties question, into... I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about right now, not the past. I'm saying, is there something fundamentally absolute um, and unconditional that provides for the viability 
when you invoke that there can be evidence. Evidence entails causal relations and connections between events. Is there something that fundamentally absolutely exists, non-dependently, that provides for the viability of evidence? Jamie rejects that. Do you reject it or accept it? I still don't know what you mean by non-dependently. Like you're saying that it, it has I mean, existed forever? Is it, is it, do you believe that there's something that exists that is non-dependent that provides for all contingencies? Or do you believe that all things that exist within the set of reality are, uh, there's an, inf an infinite contingency? Do you believe that? So I, what I was saying is, I don't know, once you go you know, far enough back, you get to the Big Bang, we don't know what happened before that. And I I'm think that's, that is the, it, we are talking about the universe. I know, I'm not talking about cosmology. I'm talking right now, is there something fundamental? Do you exist absolute? in this universe? Okay, well, what I think- Do you exist in this universe? It doesn't matter what I think. I'm asking because you if position. we can't have a we cannot have a conversation about this if we cannot agree on certain facts. And I'm, I'm saying if you position. if you agree with me that you exist in this universe, and I I believe that we exist in some sort of universe, we can take that universe and see if it is non dependent or not, or we can at I'm least asking, talk about do it. You believe? Yeah, you're not addressing my question. I asked you, do you believe that there's something that is fundamentally absolute? and non-dependent. Jamie so rejected that. He rejected or accepted. So let me let me just you're let me trying, just try you're and trying to help this conversation along a little okay. bit. He, if you've, you've asked him the same question and then said you're not understanding and then repeated the question using precisely okay. the same language. Um, maybe if you ask the question in a different way or, I mean, I can try and help explain what I believe your question is. If you're, if you're trying to communicate more clearly. Okay, so I'll, re I'll rephrase it since you didn't understand the previous way that I made clear. Um, do you believe that there is something that is ultimate that everything depends upon, including the concept of causal relations, which equals evidence? You asserted in your atheist worldview that there can be evidence for things. Well, evidence is going to require that something foundationally in your model of reality is absolute and ultimate. Now, Jamie, two weeks ago, Wait, why? categorically rejects that. Why? Do you believe? Well, I'm asking you whether you believe it. No, or no, not. you made a statement. You made a blatant statement that it requires that, and I'm, I'm asking you why. Well, well, I said it will either require it or you or not. Which do you believe? Well, no, you you said that in order for you know this to in order to have um, logic and to have causal connections and stuff that you have to believe this. And I'm, I'm curious why. It, well, then, then, then what you're going to be left with, okay, either you believe that there's a fundamentally absolute or ultimate that provides for causal relations and connections, or you, be, or you believe that events are not the result of an absolute and causal relations. It's either, or I'm just asking you, which do no, you there's, believe? There's a third option. What is it? The third option is that we don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And we know... Which, which option do you choose? Okay, so. uh, my, I'm giving you my option. My option is uh, I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt if everything that has ever existed existed, in which case something always came from something else in different forms, or if there was a point at, in which there was nothing and then it popped into existence. I don't so, know. Right. That so is the most know. honest answer is I do not know. Now, we know that there are – that within our universe, there are certain laws and that we can look at you know, these you, laws and we can that? observe cause how and effect of, because of patterns, of because of patterns, because we've never seen you, these laws you, be broken. Are you, using your, yeah, are you using your sense perception to determine that there are laws? I'm not just using my sense perception. I'm, I'm relying – well, I mean I am using my sense perception, but I'm – I can say like maybe my eyes fail me and so I'll use, you know, some, uh, I might use like a mass spectrometer or uh, spectro uh, uh, that's a, that's spectroscopy that's and an stuff. Extension. Now it is, it uh, is an extension of my yes. senses, which is why I said I, I am. I understand, that. I understand that. But you see, when you appeal to your sense perception to justify laws of nature, you have to presuppose laws of nature for the meaningfulness of eyesight. Are you aware that's begging the question? No, because I didn't do that. What I said, what I said is... And, I, and this is why I gave the third option is because we cannot know beyond a shadow of a doubt because our senses okay. can fool us. Okay, so do you believe then in causality and causal relations by faith 
or do you have a rational justification for causal relations? He's provided it. What what I believe has has no um, effect on what reality is. My my beliefs well, are not relevant no, here. Asking, what well, what's relevant know. here is, is relevant. I'm asking you. What what's relevant here is what can we measure? What can we know in order to come well, to the most reliable? Center. To come to the most reliable um, worldview as to you know to, to determine asking, how to live our lives. I don't think you're, you're understanding his question. answer, EF, because my he's not just is, answering the initial you, point of your question. The entire crux of this line of questioning appears to depend on the problem. Hang on, EF. Jamie's going somewhere. You're uh, talking over you know, him. The philosophical problem of hard solipsism. Now, you have I'm brought not up. About I, I know that you are not using that word, but I believe that the entire crux of your well, then are you believing this on faith is dependent upon an understanding no, of this, which I would like to, to explain so that the audience can keep up with our it has conversation. It nothing to do with solipsism. Right? If this, the, this, yeah. We're also, we have a, an audience yeah. that we're trying to talk to to yeah. get through so, these ideas I, together. Right. I'm, I'm attempting I'm to fill a clear this, answer to you. Yeah, How so, do you determine yeah, that? Can you, also yeah, Thomas. I'm trying to, to help the conversation along and to make sure that the audience is, uh, you know, following along with this discussion. So as, as best I can explain it, um, there is, you know, among other things, a philosophical problem of how can we know that things are true? Among those things, um, causal relationships in reality. And as best that I'm aware, uh, once you get back to the point of, well, I am experiencing something, even if my experiences are false, the only thing that I can know is that there is a thing here, right? My mind in well, some way exists. Why form would you say exists. that? Two weeks ago, you said you rejected categorically that nothing is absolute. That's a contradiction, Jamie. N n no. So if I if I you either know, misspoke or miscommunicated, that, if I on. either misspoke or miscommunicated, I apologize okay. for that. So, okay. Do you believe that there's anything fundamentally absolute, Jamie? Can you define fundamentally absolute? Yeah, it's something that exists non-dependently. I don't know whether or not my conscious exists dependent or independent. I'm not asking you about your consciousness. Yeah, I'm asking so, you, is there anything yeah, so that is... As far as I, I do not, I do not hold the belief that there is something that exists fundamentally and non-causally. Oh, no, okay, is, so you is, don't... Um, well, well, okay, right. But my question is, is, do you believe that there's something that's fundamentally and absolute? So you don't believe that there's anything that is absolute. Is that correct? Well, I, I don't hold it. I, we're saying just, we don't just, know. Just to clarify, I'm saying that I neither believe nor know that to be ans the answer. And the reason I'm being this specific is I don't want to miscommunicate. I don't want to give either the audience or you the impression that I believe that that is not the case, which is different than not believing that okay, it is. Okay, so you're undecided whether something's absolute? Yeah, I, I don't have that conclusion. Okay, since you're undecided that something is absolute then you must believe by blind faith that there are no. causal relations because you have no, okay, then what's your rational justification for so, causal relations? So the, the, the uh, alternative that you provided, which you, you just explained, oh, well, then you must believe on. That was question on, I asked. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking through my thoughts here. So the alternative that you just provided, which was, well, then you must believe in these things on faith, uh, implies that I believe necessarily these things, right? So the only thing that I have, that you have, that Thomas has, as best any of us can know, is the way that we can measure and interact with the world around us. Is that, is that absolute, Jamie? Uh, if you say absolute and mean not dependent yeah, on absolutely. something else, then... It's absolutely true. Can you define it's, what you well, mean by absolutely and, true? And, it is, it is have, the have, only... You've, you've defined I have, this. I have one way of interacting with anything, uh, and it is the basis. Me. I'm answering your question right now. I have one way of interacting or knowing, knowing or coming to a belief about anything, and the fundamental basis of that is my ability to perceive. And I'm unaware of anyone that has provided a solution to that which is called in philosophy the problem of hard solipsism. Now, e. F. is so there a solution to the problem of hard solipsism? So your perception depends is upon Is there a solution to the problem of hard solipsism? Right. Your, your claim to perception is based upon causal relations. 
Do you have a rational justification, Jamie, that there are causal relations and connections between events? When you say rational explanation, do you mean something other than the only way that uh, I can interact with anything? I just want to know what your rational justification is for causal Define relations. Define rational or justification you, because I believe that I've answered your question. Do you, do you have a deductive way of reasoning that there are causal relations between events, i.e. evidence, or do you believe it by faith? So, uh, so the, I mean, the evidence... starting point, if you, the starting point is the way that I can interact uh, with reality. And if you start there, what follows after is reasonable. So here, here's where I, I'm, I, here's I, where I, I'm I, wanting I, to, here's where I, I'm wanting to I, rip my I, hair out, I, EF. I still didn't is, hear, I did hear you I, explain how you know there are causal relationships. EF, you're, you're, you're talking over us. To, what, can, can I? Like, I, I feel like you guys are going in circles, and, and here's where I want to rip my hair out. You guys, question. can I please... Yeah, I, I, so, I, hold on. Um, why, why I'm getting frustrated is because you are... are you have this script, and I've, I've seen you do this script before, and I've, I've heard you on Discord um, bitching about Talk Heathen, it. about this, please let me finish. Yeah, and I... It's it's extremely frustrating because what you're doing is you're trying to say everything is dependent on something else and you're making a hard stance. You're saying this is everything that we know is is contingent on something else. And I would most likely agree with you and say that there is something that everything is contingent on. My consciousness is contingent on the, the universe and the laws of, of nature and stuff. Whether those are absolute, the, the laws of our universe versus the laws of other universes and some kind of multiverse, I don't know. None of us know. We don't know these things beyond a shadow of a doubt. So for you to come along and make an absolute claim that everything is contingent, therefore it must be God or it must be the universe and it's more likely to be God because reasons is just flat out bullshit and it's absurd. And you're making a claim and you're making a statement without evidence. Now you're saying that in order to have evidence, in order to have something that you know you can, you know, is, is causal, you're like, well, how do we know that that works every time? The answer is we don't. For all I know, I could be living in a computer simulation where someone has set all all of the rules. You could call that someone God. You could call it an advanced alien computer programmer. I don't know that beyond you know anything outside my consciousness. As far as I know, no one has solved the hard problem of consciousness. But if that's the case, they could alter you know the the algorithms and they could make it so that when I pick up this water bottle, it just melts and falls right through and, and completely violates the laws of physics. As far as I know, as everything around me that I've observed, I've never seen that happen. So I operate in a world where I, I go based off of patterns. I go based off of every time that I've picked up this water bottle, it has never done that. But I cannot make a straight up bold claim that that is going to be the case 100% of the time. But I can say with 99.99999% certainty based off of everything that I have observed, and that's the best we have. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Do I think it makes sense? No, because you're not still not addressing the issue. Okay. You are you are you guessing when you assert that there are causal relations? Are you adopting no. that so, there are causal relations by faith, or do you have a rational justification? So I told He's, you I'm going based off of patterns, no. and I'm and no. that is okay, the so best evidence patterns, that we have. Patterns, patterns. Yeah, patterns can be the result of chance rather than necessity, Thomas. And sometimes yes. we're sometimes we're wrong about that, and that's why science right. makes so corrections. How do you, how do you, okay, so Thomas, how do you demarcate any particular consecutive sequences are the result of spontaneous chance versus necessity, such as causality? How do you rationally justify one over the other, Thomas? Because we, we measure them using multiple different methods of measurement, so that's, and that's we replicate those measurements, and it's, we have other people observe them and measure them. the question, Thomas. Okay. And so, it overlaps with other fields of science, and we build you're begging, this... You're not understanding. You're begging the question. EF, EF, maybe help us understand... What conclusion do you draw about these questions? It, does, it doesn't matter what my conclusion is. Actually, it does, Thomas because was, right now I'm asking you that question. Okay. Do you have a conclusion about these questions? Yeah, I hold to the Christian worldview. Now, Thomas, I want to know why. I'm sorry, you hold to the Christian it. worldview. Okay, I'd like, I'd like to finish my question. I'd like you Thomas. to justify um, the Christian worldview. You, you Presumably, if you believe in the Christian sure worldview that, that includes the text of the Bible. Okay, I'm do you believe that I should he accept... He does this where he likes yeah. to just talk and talk yeah. and talk, and it's not a productive conversation. Yeah. Hold on, EF, uh, Thomas has put you back on hold. Mostly, I just want to know whether or not you believe that I should accept the Christian worldview. 
And if so, what are the reasons why I should justify the Christian worldview? Yes? Okay, the reason why you're asking me this question is because you do not want to complete me to complete my asking Thomas the question about his rational justification. You've asked it three times. I'd like you to answer my question. That's right. You've been on my show three separate times, and you have not presented a single justification for your position. It took you three times on my show for you to to say anything about what you believe and why, which is the entire premise of this show. Trying to change the subject. Okay. I'm trying to ask you a question that I have wanted to ask you since second right. one of your first call on my show. Do you want to have this conversation or not? Also, Matt Dillahunty would like you to uh, to call him on on. Uh, oh, I'll uh, be more than happy. To call I believe. Matt I mean, I, he hasn't said anything. I I can't hear him. Hopefully, right I haven't now. done a disservice. Right EF, what I would like to know is: Is there a good he just, reason? He just talks loudly. I know, it's I know. so annoying. EF, is there a good reason is, for me to accept the Christian worldview? Yes or no? First Peter three fifteen. Yes. Oh, yeah, there, there is a good answer to that. But I'd like to finish my question with Thomas. First. I would like you to now, answer Thomas, my question Thomas, because I don't believe that. You, you know what? I, me, I'm right here I with you. I don't so believe that Thomas can provide you an answer that will satisfy you. God, I love this mute button. Yeah, it's here. Hold on. EF, you're, you're, you're back off hold. I don't believe that uh, that Thomas can provide you an answer that will satisfy your curiosity. Well, I, I provided him with an well, answer. I, I know. And, That's and, why I chose the, the words that I did. And he keeps going in this I, loop. I, I, it's, I, I as a Thomas. programmer, we call these infinite loops, I, and it's maddening, and we need to fix his fucking algorithm. Okay, well, so... Sorry. Yeah, so because I believe that that line of questioning with Thomas is not going to provide something that is satisfactory to you, or provide something that the audience provide an answer that the audience hasn't already heard. Are you willing to discuss reasons why I or other people should accept the Christian worldview? Oh, I'm willing to discuss that. I will gladly do it. Okay. When I finish my question with Thomas, I asked Thomas to explain to me how he determines that the uh, the so, consecutive events are the result of causality rather than spontaneous chance. Can okay, you answer can, that, Tom? Can I, if I answer that question one more time, will you be satisfied? Well, I, I'd like an answer to the question. How do you, here's the question. If, if, if I, if I answer it, if I answer your question this I'll, time, I'll hang on, you, 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 you really have to learn EF. When, when someone asks you something or when someone's engaging with you, you really have to learn to like, to to have a, a back and forth. It's like a game of tennis. One side has the ball and then they hit it to the other. You don't just keep talking over someone. You can't have a conversation like that. I, I, I asked you and you didn't answer. If I answer your question one more time, will you be satisfied with that? And then will you allow us to ask you a question about why about your position? Because it sounds like to me you're trying to show all of the holes in our reasoning, and yet you haven't given a single reason, a single justification for your Christian worldview. And so for us to say, we don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we're trying to get to the truth as honestly as we possibly can, and here's the best that we have to work with, and for you to say, oh, that's not good enough, it's, it's full of holes and it's flawed, but then you don't offer any reason. I'm open. If you can provide me logic and evidence and reasons why not just God exists, but Jesus rose from the dead and all of this stuff, which is a huge leap. If you can show me why, I will co I will convert right here, right now, on this show. Go ahead. Okay, so the question is, how do you rationally justify that the events that you call patterns are the result of causal relations and connections between events rather than spontaneous occurrence? Do you have a rational justification or do you believe by blind faith that there are causal relations and connections and evidence? So I don't believe on blind faith. What I do is I either say, I don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt, which is, that's an okay answer. If you, if, if you cannot tell beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's okay to say, I don't know, but... All of the, the evidence that we've observed around us over time. Oh, that's the has, no, that's it's not. The no, yeah. it's not. Yeah, you have it's, to support yeah. that there's evidence. All right. Also no. Or you can say, 
everything that we've observed so far in this universe you know, functions functions in these ways. And this is what we've observed about the universe around us. And based off of everything that we know and have observed, this is how we have to live in order to live functionally, in order to, to operate in a world. No, it's not. You're committing right. the fallacy. The, yeah, you cool. are. Well, All right. Okay. I didn't hear. Uh, okay, I fantastic. Didn't, can you explain? Let me let me let me jump you, in here an a little bit because I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, like I no e, 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 e F E F E F E F. Hold rap. on. He's on hold again. Hold on. Thomas has, has put you on hold again. Sure, you're right. Uh, Thomas has committed a thousand fallacies. His answer is completely unacceptable. He has no comprehension of reality, etc. Are you willing to engage in a discussion with me? about why I should accept the Christian worldview. You're back off hold. And I'll, I'll, sorry, I, d I don't want to give you the impression that I'm not going to let you make a statement about what you find unsatisfactory sure. in Thomas's so answer. So just before, before I get into my reasoning for uh, my worldview as a Christian, mm -hmm. um, and uh, just so I don't put words in Thomas' mouth, is it your position that you have no rational justification for causality and evidence, Thomas? Well, first, I would like to um, take issue with you saying that I was uh, performing a begging the question fallacy, and I'm going to read yeah, off the definition of the begging the question fallacy. Sure. Begging the question is an informal fallacy that occurs when an argument's premises assume the truth of the conclusion instead of supporting it. At That's no right. point, at no point in my argument or reasoning did I assume the truth of my conclusion. Yes, you what did. I did was I said, I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I made no hard claims. So there was no right. assumption so, of a conclusion so, to be had. So, you, so, okay. so if I made no hard claims and I came to no solid conclusion, we know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. I said, I do not know for certain, but... Everything that we observe around us seems to indicate that this is the case, that when I do this, this happens. There's something going on here. There's something that's being caused, something that's happening, okay? Now, I came to no conclusion. I came to no, you know, solid statement of fact about the universe. And so there was no begging the question fallacy to be had. Thank you. Okay, yeah. did you appeal to sense perception to justify causal relations, Thomas? Oh, my God. I never said that there was a causal relation to begin with, period. I never said that there okay. wasn't okay. to begin with, period. Okay. Do, do, do causal relations and connections exist? I said I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt. It appears yeah. that way. It, okay, do you believe it by faith? No. Okay, then what's your rational justification that so, is not question begging that you, that so, there are causal so, relations? So, um, EF, if, I, I think the, the line of questioning that you have, correct me if I'm wrong, is designed to draw attention to the fact that beyond sense perception and conclusions that can be drawn within the assumption that sense perception is meaningful, that there hasn't been a justification provided either by Thomas or myself to justify sense perception as a means of it, uh, inter, you know, understanding existence. Is that a point that you're yeah, yeah, Thomas is Thomas is asserting Thomas is asserting that evidence is meaningful. Evidence entails causal relations and connections. Do you have Thomas a rational so, justification? Yeah, before you ask before you ask the question again, he's provided what he would say is a, I don't know whether he would use the word rational, but what I would describe as the the reasons that he draws conclusions about causal relationships. And I think the point that you're trying yeah, to make by asking, I think the point that you're trying to make by asking this question again and again is that you believe that his answer is insufficient. And so you ask the question yeah. again and say that his answer is insufficient. And he provides his answer again using different words. And you ask the question again. Yeah, he, he repeats using, the question back yeah. So, given that he has given the same answer, I literally read off begging the question. Given that that Thomas has given right. the same I, answer I, more than twice, I, I, and you have asked the same question more than twice, I think that you have received the only answer from Thomas to that question that you are going to receive. Now, can you yeah. can well, you follow well, up on well, your well, side? Of, hold on. Yeah. Do, do you understand that asking him the question again yeah. is not going to get a different answer? Okay. 
I won't ask that question again, Thomas. Fantastic. You said, so Can you it, answer my question, please? Why should I accept the well, Christian worldview? Well, because he, he denied that he was um, question begging. He appealed. Excellent. To he appealed to sense perception in order he, to justify uh, sense perception. Oh, gonna, oh, this point. White knight for him? Oh are you my white knight, Jamie? fucking god! Are you kidding me you, with I the buzzwords? You don't in god, listen, Jamie. listen to I me. You don't All right, in god. You, you are now on hold because that is perhaps the most dishonest way you have engaged yep, with had, either myself or Thomas or with Eric. We had a Really? Moment. My explanation, hold on, my ex, my exclamation of, oh my God, earned from you the response, I thought you didn't believe in God. Are you joking? That is unbelievably absurd for you to say in response to me. Do you want to have an honest discussion about what I should believe and what justifications you have for what you believe or not? That is a yes or no question that I need the answer to before we proceed. EF. Oh, I would, I would love to hear what your foundational justifications are, but you told me- I believe Jamie, that you, you have just believe... inadvertently provided me You're with the wrong. answer, no. Are you prepared now on this call to provide me sufficient reason to accept the Christian worldview? Yeah, the reason why you should accept the Christian worldview is due to the impossibility of the contrary. Through a reductio ad absurdum, if you deny the proposition of the Christian worldview, your worldview- is going to have to provide a foundation that provides for all coherence. But you told me two weeks ago, Jamie, and so did Thomas, you don't know what the foundation to the uh, the world is. Yes. Okay? E so e you have so no yeah. coherence. So what you're trying to do... Hold on. Over talking. I was asked a question to yes. defend my Christian faith. My position... To persuade said, me to accept it, actually. Was a well, the issue, no, the issue is not to persuade you, it's to, it's to show you that your position is incoherent. Now, the Christian worldview is true in virtue of a reductio ad absurdum. The denial of the proposition that the Christian worldview is true results in a contradiction. Because in order for you to reason at all, okay, you're going to have to provide a foundation or a, a fundamental absolute in your no. worldview by no. which... And reason. Now, do you have, here's the question. No, no. So I have a response to a statement that you just I, I made. I have a response to a statement that you just made. Thomas has put you on hold again. So I'm going to keep putting you just, on hold as long as you yeah, you so, railroad us and you yeah, don't, like so, when we try to respond to points that you make, because you make points that are flawed. You make points that, that have no basis in logic. And when we try to call you out on them so that we can actually figure out the truth in order to have that as the basis, mm -hmm. the, the, the logical starting point that we can then have a conversation from, if you start with something that has no substance, we can't get anywhere. So when you lay down 20 bricks and we're like, wait, 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 not these 18, but these two are good, then if you don't let us stop and actually address them and you just keep talking over us, then we're not gonna get anywhere. Do you wanna get somewhere or do you want to just read off a script? Jamie, you were gonna say something. So the the response that I was gonna give to your position and here, uh, uh, I'll, I'll take you off hold, but the response that I wanna give to your position is that you've said, um, the, uh, you know, you've, you've made the statement that our worldview does not provide for a justification or a, a justification for our ability to reason and that the Christian worldview does. And you've pointed out that because we have, I, I believe it, it's not your exact wording, but you said, because we don't have a justification, we need to provide a, a justification for uh, our ability to reason. Um, no, there needs to be a justification for our ability to reason. But for your statement of, oh, you have to provide it, implies that there is some fact about reality or reason that means I have to know the answer right now. And my statement is actually, I don't know the answer. Can you explain it to me? So that there are okay, two so things you there. Believe, so you believe, you believe then in your God-free world that um, you can reason because I don't know? We no, I we we also in no, your God free no, world. No, so, that <laughs> yeah. so to, to be very clear, EF, I don't have a belief about why I can reason. Really? Then why are you doing this radio show or TV show? Because 
to address questions of what people believe and why. So you don't know in why the, you can reason, but you assert you I don't have a justification for why I can reason that will satisfy the way that you frame the question. You believe you However, can reason by blind. All right, so you are once again back to interrogating a worldview that is not yours. At least he you have stated that you have stated that the Christian worldview provides the answer. At least he Can believes that uh, blind faith is that. bad. He's yeah. agreeing with us that blind faith is bad. That's a good starting point. Well, I mean... Yeah, so so are you admitting you have no basis for so, reason? Oh, you, oh doing my a, God. He, he EF, didn't I'm, say that. EF, I'm attempting to Maybe? ask you to explain and elaborate on the answer that the Christian worldview provides. The Christian worldview is the only coherent worldview in virtue of God's revelatory acts that God has revealed what the nature of reality is. Which God? Both in part and in whole. I said the Christian worldview. Do you, does the word Christian mean okay, anything? So, well, so can uh, you so not what, use the same re reasoning to justify Krishna? Muslim? Can, okay. you, no, can you I'm, not? I'm, can you not use the I, same I exact line you're of reasoning? Talking about me over talking, I'm trying to answer your yeah. question. So and you're over talking. So, EF, the the the, uh, the reason that I would interject myself here into your answer is, you've said that the Christian worldview uh, is sensible and it provides this, and it has been revealed through God's, um, you know, through acts of God revealing things. Can you elaborate on what you mean by God's re uh, revelatory actions? What, yeah, which God actions has, are those? God has, God, God has revealed himself in all that exists and through special revelations throughout human history. Now, okay. you will either accept that. I'd like to finish. You well, asked no, me you a make, question. No, you make a statement. So okay. you, you make, okay. you've made a, a minute, statement, uh, and I would like to respond to that I, statement just, before you ask the next question. What you did was... I asked a question, you provided an answer, and then you proceeded to the next point. I have asked a question, as you have done to me and to Thomas, as is necessary in discussion on this episode, and to, I think it might be three, but at least two episodes prior. So when you provide that answer, given that I'm attempting to understand what you are describing as the Christian worldview, it is in my interest to respond to that, to make sure, one, that I understand it, and two, understand how it fits into the other aspects of the Christian worldview. So when you say God has revealed himself through all things and through special revelation throughout time, I then have sort of two statements that I can respond to. It's actually a difficult choice as far as which ones I mean, uh, which, uh, which one to address first. So let's unpack this. When you say special acts of revelation, do you mean uh, the prophet, the uh, revelations to uh, human beings that are, uh, you know, discerned as prophets by Christian tradition? Yes. Now the special revelation entails God sovereignly recording his objective communication with various individuals throughout the course of human history, starting with Adam and culminating uh, with Jesus Christ and, and his apostles, and then recording down um, what they saw, what they heard. Now, okay. the Bible is it, the Bible as God's revelation is self-attesting and self-evident for what it is. If it you is. do not accept that, if you do not accept that presentation, then I don't. you're going to be you're then then if you don't then you have nothing to base reason on just as Jamie said he has no basis for reason Thomas do you have That's, a foundation okay. for reason okay you're doing you're doing this thing again where you've provided an explanation and then yeah. moved on to the and then you've prov moved on it's to the next question under the assumption that I don't want to respond or ask a clarifying question to what you have said so you have said that it is uh, self-evident and self-attesting. So if another document emerged that was uh, self-attesting and self-evident, that more accurately described human history, would you believe that that accurately described the nature of God? You, you can't propose that because in your worldview, no such thing can exist. Actually, what? I can ask you the question what you're in doing. order to find out what your answer is. If the hypothetical, the hypothetical is incoherent. It is not incoherent. What you're actually, what you're, what you're it's, doing, it's, EF, Oh my God, EF, really? Did you really just say no, hypotheticals are incoherent? Do you mean God all? Here. Sorry, sorry, I may have misunderstood. EF, do you mean my specific hypothetical or hypotheticals in general? 
Yeah. See, when when we have two worldviews in conflict, do you mean we, my hypothetical specifically, or hypotheticals okay, in general? Yeah, if you need you to learn to like, listen hey, to on. people talking yeah. to you so that you can I respond to that. All right. Can can you respond to my question that? about what you mean? Because you made a statement, and I'm not sure that I understood it. And so before you make another statement, I need to make sure that I've understood the first one. You said okay, the hypothetical is absurd. Do you mean mine specifically yes. or hypotheticals in general? Yes, because what you're doing, what you, what you're doing is is when you offer a hypothetical of another revelatory source that stands in contradiction to the Christian revolu uh, revelation, when you appeal to another revelation, you're actually presenting another model of reality. But you see, if you do so out of your worldview, it contradicts your worldview. That's the fallacy of pluralism. Okay, uh, n no, it's, it's a specific question about why you believe what you believe. I, I understand. I understand the point you've made. However, that's not the gist of the question. The question was about how you come to conclusions, right? So, if your conclusion is based in part on special revelation, specifically the Bible, and that that justification is that it is self-evident, which self is which is which is begging the question, by the way. That is a begging the question fallacy because yeah. you're assuming your conclusion already is true mm -hmm. that the Bible is already well, self-evident without any without actually showing why it's true. So you're yeah. doing the fallacy that you thought I was doing and I showed yeah. you I wasn't. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up, Thomas. All right, am I am I on, am I am I on mic? Yeah, you're you're mic'd. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up, okay? Because when one is appealing to one's ultimate authority, Thomas, right? Uh, circularity is unavoidable. Now, what? When you're in, I, okay, I you agree. <laughs> you just yeah, admitted to circular Thomas. reasoning. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Are you going to let me finish? Do Thomas? you have? Oh, I'm going to ask you. Yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, so, you're just so, burying yourself but, deeper. But before, me up. I didn't finish. Remember, yeah, you okay. told me about right. not over talking time. You're right. We we should let now, you finish. I do not. Okay, I do not reject all forms of circularity. Okay, because to do so will plunge your your yourself into a worldview of incoherence. Because then you will have no ultimate authority to appeal to. Now I'm going to ask you a very so simple before question. Before we move Thomas, on from okay? that point, I'd like to so ask my simple I, question. I know that you would that. like to ask your simple question, EF. That is what has happened for the majority of three episodes of calls. What I would like to do is clarify what you mean. So part of your answer was because then you would have no ultimate authority to appeal to and that would plunge you into a worldview of incoherence. Do you believe that it is possible for a human being to not have uh, an understanding of the world? Right, to not have sufficient information and an understanding of the world, right? So for example, a human being that has no contact with the Bible. I, I'm not understanding your question. So uh, what I what I heard in your answer, and, and correct me if I've misunderstood some of it, was that um, you, you don't reject all of circularity. I'm assuming that specifically you mean what Thomas pointed out as far as the circularity of the Bible attesting to itself. Um, because what you're saying, because the first part of your answer was when you appeal to your ultimate authority, circularity is unavoidable. Uh, have I understood those if portions reject, if, yes. of your answer yes. correctly? Okay. If one so, rejects, so are you describing appealing to an ultimate authority as an act of faith? All, no. Okay. All so you're not taking it on faith. All appeals to ultimate authority. Well, it depends on what you mean by faith, okay? Uh, there without are evidence. different definitions of oh, faith. Yeah. Okay, well, the, I, don't, I, don't, I don't use that definition, oh, okay? Yeah. Can you now, just now if you if you wanted to, if you want if 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 you want to define faith as belief without evidence is that the definition we're going with Thomas or pretending to know things you don't know let's let's okay, for yes. the sake of this that's discussion lovely, let's use that one Bogosian definition Thomas okay. now are you defining faith as believing something for which you don't have rational justification for Thomas so to to be clear if we can let's for the sake of this can I, discussion can answer that question? That's For the definition? sake of this discussion, let's use that definition. Okay. Well, then, then Thomas, you believe without rational justification that there are causal connections, don't you, Thomas? No, I, I, no. I told you. I are don't you familiar know. with the two quoque fallacy, sir? He doesn't seem to understand that every time I've answered that question, I've said I do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. It's okay well, to well, not know beyond okay. a shadow of a doubt so, and not take a hard stance on something, but to say well, that. What, what, 
Well, if you don't have a rational justification for causal connections, then you believe it by faith, Thomas. Okay. No, I, I believe so, it based off of we've, all we've of- We've already been down this road. So we've, we've already been down this road. provided no rational justification yeah. for- Cool, yes. And yeah. we, Do you understand that we've been down this that road before? I think I think that your point is made and understood. Disagreed, well, but- I, I, we, I, I understand that Thomas We saw your point, but, and then we asked you to rationalize why you yeah, think so, that your position leads to the Bible and not to the Quran. You could say, oh, well, it has yeah. to come back to a so, higher figure. Therefore, sorry. Allah, okay. therefore, you know, Krishna, therefore right. Zeus. Yeah. It could be any of them. Wow. And you've given us uh, yeah. no reason to believe in the Bible. Tell you, why. you won't right. even let Are me finish. He won't, those... he won't even let me finish getting to the end of my so, sentence before. So I... So, so here, let, let me let me rephrase that question because I believe there's there's a, a more succinct way of saying it. You have said the Christian worldview. How did you? How could we determine that it is the Christian worldview rather than the Muslim worldview or some other worldview that provides the same reasoning with a different God? Um, the answer to the question is determination is in virtue of your model of of reality. You cannot offer determination, which is essentially epistemology or your theory of knowledge. Without a model of reality, yeah. you cannot have a um, epistemology. So without a sovereign, omniscient, omnipotent God providing us with natural and special revelation about the nature of reality, you will not be able to provide a rational justification for your model of reality. And without a rational justification for your model of reality, you will not be able to I don't know believe that, or to determine. Yeah, I, I don't believe that believing in the existence of a God provides a rational explanation or okay, any good. of the then things you just said. What, what is the foundation? What is the foundation of reality? That That's an argument from ignorance, logical fallacy. Oh, You've responded right. to me questioning your reasoning by saying, "Oh yeah, well then you give an answer." I don't need to give an answer to justify I don't know. It's a statement about what I know and believe. I neither have knowledge nor belief about the questions you're asking. What you've just said is you can't you can't get there or justifies rationality without um, a, a monotheistic god to justify it. Right. In part, Can that you, was an answer to the question between which monotheistic God described by different portions okay, of the so Abrahamic you tradition. Reject, so you reject. And you answer my question God. about how could you determine which stories about the Abrahamic I, tradition. I, I determine. I determine it. I de determine it uh, two ways. Num number one, in virtue of God's self-evident and self-verifying disclosure of Himself. To and Muhammad. Whatever is okay. Let me finish. No. I'm quoting the Bible. Now, are you going yes, to let me Yes, and if someone answer? quotes the Quran... Are you, are you, are you, so you're, so, so you're going I, I feel like there's a misunderstanding the because I, I yeah, think that I... Yeah, there's a misunderstanding because I don't think I've accurately described my question because you're providing an answer okay. to a different one. So my question the was, Quran, how could you tell the, the difference between so revelation to, for example, uh, the apostles, the claims of revelation to the apostles versus the claims of revelation to the Muhammad? Well, uh, Allah of the Quran is not omniscient because he got many things wrong in, in the Quran. Now, the Thank bottom line you. Here, okay, because I the God in the Bible you. did exactly the same thing. I'm still talking. I yeah. know you're still talking, but you made a point that I have to, I have have to, to shine the light yeah. on this because it is yeah. so crucial. Because for everyone watching right now, we would be doing them a disservice if we let that go. Because so, you just said that you believe that the Bible is true and not the Quran because the Quran gets things wrong. Well, I hate to break it to you, cupcake, sugar muffin. The Bible gets stuff wrong too all the fucking time. And I can I can open up Genesis 1-1 one, one, and I can go through and the first eight verses, I will go verse by verse and I will show you scientific inaccuracy after scientific inaccuracy after scientific inaccuracy. Bam, right there, case closed. Thank you very much. And we've been going on this call for about an hour, so I don't know how much more productive it's going to be or if you want to. Yeah, so. Well, I, 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 my mic on, is my mic on? Yeah, yeah, you've been on. Okay, well, well, Thomas, sugar muffin, uh, sugar cake, uh, it, are all conclusions in science provisional? Are all conclusions in uh, in science provisional? I'm Yes. Like, 
specific what do you mean specifically because you've you've given a few definitions are, a few are times all, that are are all sci are all scientific dec uh, declarations pr provisional and subject to revision or refutation science in just by definition yes, it is, is it it is it builds evidence and it builds a case and and it, it builds upon yes, past uh, observations yes. and it's, it modifies itself the answer based is yes. of, are, yeah are all, the are answer all is yes scientific proposition so they're not necessarily true then, are they? That's not true. Given that the Bible contradicts uh, not only itself, it contradicts things that can right? be determined by reason. So if the Bible contradicts reason, provisional. how could you possibly say well, it justifies reason? Right if you include in, in the Christian moment. worldview both the Bible and reason, you have a self-contradictory worldview. I'll be glad I'll be glad to address that but I'm still addressing Thomas. Now Thomas, you said the by the Genesis chapter 1 is wrong point after point because it contradicts scientific declarations because it so contradicts our no, ability no, 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 to no, understand no, no, reality no, 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 no. which on, is what you on. are justifying. This is, this is a very uh, common mis okay. misconception that I think a lot of people have. Okay. It doesn't um, contradict scientific declarations, I think was the word that he used. It mm -hmm. contradicts scientific measurements. And there's a huge difference there. There are some things in science called hypotheses that you make. And when you gather evidence and you try to figure out, you know, if there's anything to them, then they can become scientific theories that explain a little bit about why something happens. That is provisional. That is the provisional part of science. The measurements that we make are scientific laws. There's no point when a theory becomes a law, but the measurements that we make about the speed of gravity, things about, you know, the distance from, you know, the the earth to the sun at different points and stuff, like uh, in, in its orbit, all of these things we can measure. The circumference of the okay, earth, good. we no, can I'll, measure. I, I, I so know. hang on, I know. hang on. I'm. Th that is the difference between a, a, a scientific statement and a scientific measurement. So when I say that there are things in the Bible in Genesis 1-1, even the very first verse that is wrong, it is wrong because these are things that we have measured. Okay, are are there are there any scientific measurements that are absolute and not provisional, Thomas? When when we measure them, what we do is we increase the accuracy of the measurement. That's so not for an example, to my question. so for example, when we said not an answer to my question. What do you mean? He's he's asking if there are any okay. scientific what, conclusions what, what, that are what absolute. You're doing is I'm asking you, I'm asking you an extremely circumspect question, and you're giving me a scientific lecture. I asked you, are the declarations of measurement provisional and subject to change and revision based upon a reexamination of the data or new observation? Are any scientific declarations, even declarations of measurement, provisional, Thomas? Everything in science is gets, provisional. It, it is provisional. It can be yeah, updated and cool. become let's more let's, accurate. Let's let's go through but, this. So hold on, hold on. No, like yeah, the answer is I'd yes. Like I, no, you're you're wanting to finish your script. You're wanting to get have a gotcha and just catch us in something. We are trying to clarify our point so that we can show you what we mean by it, and that you know we actually have points here to be made. You know, a scientific measurement gets updated because it becomes more accurate. There are some things in this universe that we can tell you, like I was telling you before, we do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Consciousness is one of those things. We do not know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're not a brain in a vat or living in a simulation, okay? There are things that we measure and we find out that we were wrong about. There are things that we measure over and over and over again. We are never at absolute 100% certainty, no. And I agree with you that there, but that does not mean that suddenly your worldview is equally valid and equally viable as something that we've measured a thousand times when yours has no scientific evidence whatsoever. It has none. And then you're going to say just because you have loads and loads of measurements and thousands of different ways that we've looked at this, but it has a 99.99999% of accuracy. Well, it could potentially be wrong because of that 0.001%. Therefore, it's on equal footing with the Bible. What kind of reasoning is that? It's not. It's absurd nonsense. Face it. Well, I, no, I, sorry, I, I, sorry, sorry you I, I, I'd already taken you off, okay. off hold. Sorry, you're, off, you're, you're back off hold. Am I on? Yes. Okay, so sugar cakes. Um, since hey, we're going to be friendly here. Yeah. 
Um, if you if you say that scientific provisional statements falsify uh, verses in in Genesis, how does something that's provisional falsify something else when you don't know that the provisional stipulation is true or not? Because we know that there that one of these things carries of greater weight. So if they're greater provisional, weight. they're not. Listen carefully. If they're provisional, they're not necessarily true, Thomas. And yes, and the Bible was provisional less than as well. It's, less it's, than provisional. Like you're telling me that a provisional conclusion that is not necessarily true falsifies something when you don't know. So what, that the let's look at. Is true, let's Thomas. look at. Let's look at and what it that. falsifies. All right, because there is an answer to this. Let's look at what it falsifies. So we have two propositions, an explanation that actually, you know, an explanation that's provided through the scientific method that, you know, has been replicated I know many that. times versus an explanation that is promulgated in the text of the Bible. How could we weigh those two things and compare them in order to determine which one accurately describes Reality. Well, unfortunately, when you're operating outside the Christian worldview, you yourself have admitted you don't have a foundation of absolutes for science, or do you? I'm not, one, I'm not claiming, two, you didn't answer my question, three, the Christian worldview, the beginning of this entire thing was, oh, you don't have a justification for rationality, you don't have a justification for rationality. Using rationality, you can determine what evidence is and causal links. That's the entire crux of your point. And now, using asking, that, you understand that reality contradicts the Bible. So, given that a Christian oh, okay. worldview that included the accuracy of the Bible contradicts itself, okay. why would okay. you continue to Hold it. Now, can you tell me, Jamie, you said reality contradicts the Bible. Can you tell me one absolute in reality that contradicts the Bible? Because remember, you don't believe in absolute. Well, you believe no. that the Bible is no. absolute. No. And the, at wait, no wait, point no, in time, no, 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 point. All right. at no point in time in my but, answer did I use the word absolute or but, assert that there was such a thing. If I follow your reasoning, your logic, and say a Christian worldview that includes the accuracy of the Bible accurately describes this, well, let's follow the fucking reason, and your fucking reason leads yeah. to things oh, justified okay. by the Bible that would contradict it. Something that is self-contradictory is not self-asserting to any reasonable degree. But it gets even better than that because you said that we cannot use are something we absolute. Here, Hang on. Oh, yeah. You yeah. said, can we use something absolute to disprove the Bible if we don't believe in absolutes? Well, you do believe in absolutes, okay? You believe that the Bible is absolute. So if we could use the Bible as the standard of what's absolute, we could use the Bible to disprove the Bible if it's internally inconsistent, correct? Well, I hate to break it to you, but the Bible is vastly internally inconsistent. I can show you passage after passage where the Bible yeah, contradicts man. itself. So, so, right, right. Now, you're talking about claims here. Now, you said that there is something in science that falsifies Genesis. Can you give me one singular proposition from science that is absolute and not provisional that falsifies no. Genesis? No. Can you give us any assertion I'm that is absolute no, no, and not provisional? I, like, I, like I know you like to talking to Thomas right because right then you're now, not talking to me. I'm talking to well, no, there is nothing. It's because I call him sugar muffin. I'll talk to you. Okay, good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that's okay, sugar cakes. Now, Jamie, um, if you oh, are saying God. that something falsifies the Bible. The Bible falsifies it, the Bible. Right. So, well, well, if the Bible falsifies the Bible. Then it's it not a reliable source of information right, or justification gonna, for rationality. Are we going to have a conversation here or are you just going to talk over me? I think we're going to do both probably. Okay. Yeah, of course you do because you know what? Because you don't want me to answer back. Now, We've been I, trying I, to get you so, to answer back. So I, I, I apologize. I, 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 I apologize. I've been relatively, I've been very flippant in the last uh, couple times I've responded to you and, and interjected. I would okay, like to hear your response. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Your cakes. It's okay, sugar muffin. All right. Now, you said reality falsifies the Bible. That presupposes that there's a fundamental law of non contradiction. Do you believe that there's an absolute law of non contradiction, Jamie? I don't believe in anything absolutely. Good. If you don't mean absolutely, then there's no law of non-contradiction. Therefore, you don't no. have a principle with which to critique the Bible. I think that statement would only be true if there were two kinds of belief, absolute and none. I do not believe that this is the case. I believe there's degrees you, you of confidence that are justifiable. I don't think you've understood my objection. You've said, well, if you don't believe in anything absolute, then there is no law of non-contradiction. Those are the words that you used. That is a proposition yeah. that I do not believe yeah. is justified. Okay, do you believe do you believe that there's an absolute law of non-contradiction, Jamie? No. 
Okay, then if you don't believe in the law of non-contradiction, then contradictions are actually. Hold on, I, I think I've, I've, I think I've, 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 I've hold on, I think, I, I think I've under, misunderstood your question. Yeah. It, do you mean do I absolutely believe in a law of non-contradiction, or do you mean do I believe in a law of non-contradiction that applies, you know, to everything? Is the law of non-contradiction true at all times and all places, Jamie? Uh, as best I can tell, yes, I believe that the law of non-contradiction okay. applies. How did you how did how did you determine that? Is it by blind faith? No. How did you determine that so, the proposition that a equal? I, I didn't finish my question. Yep. Since since you hold to the law of non-contradiction, you're going to have to use the law of non-contradiction in order to attack the Bible. Now, I can how use did the you Bible determine? To attack the Bible. Uh, may I finish, please? Yes. Okay, sugar muffin. May I put sugar muffin? Can I finish? I thought he was sugar. Yeah. muffin. I'm sugar muffin. Okay. Get no, it right. no, you're both. You're both sugar muffin. No, he's pumpkin oh, pie. Now. Okay. Now, now both of you sugar muffins. Now, Jamie, if you're going to say that the Bible violates some in uh, in uh, a law that cannot be violated, that's the law of non-contradiction. Well, what I'd like to know from you is is how do you know that A cannot equal not A at all times and all places? By what means, Jamie? Okay, so we've talked already about how we justify things, right? Um, it, uh, if you follow my justifications back from the, the various levels down to as fundamental as they go, through as best we can tell through observations, only as confidently as we can test those observations, down all the way to the fact that the only thing that I could say that I um, know to the highest degree that I can know things, which is not absolutely, is that there is something experiencing the things that I experience. No, that's not, that's not an answer to my question. By what means do you determine that there is a universal, absolute law of non-contradiction, Jamie? So through an understanding of uh, logic and how it applies in this world. Okay, that 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 is simply restating the same claim in different words. Yes. Do you ha can you, can you did you determine that A equals not A at all times and all places by your sense perception, or is it a concoction of your mind? Those are the same thing. I'm still waiting. I, I, I don't I understand mean, the distinction the between the two options you provided. I, I actually don't. You've said, is it a concoction of your mind? Or did you determine it with your sense perception? Did you? Those did are you at best a category within a category. Did you? Did you make universal observations through no your eyes has. at all in all places? Good. No. Then how do you know the law of non-contradiction is universal, Jamie? I because believe it's that logically it is. inconsistent. Yeah. So it, because it is. It, well, so that that's that, that's that, part so of the, the same the, thing. For, for our so, listeners, for our listeners who are tuning in, the law of non-contradiction is that something you know, if A equals B and A equals not B, cannot both be true at the same time. Yeah. It is a logical fallacy. You yeah. cannot have exactly. something by definition, by definition. By definition, it is not true. Okay, so is the law of non-contradiction true by definition or by some other means, sweet cakes? By definition, it is a logical statement. Oh, okay, good. So all you're simply saying is, then all you're simply doing is when you attempt to critique, to critique the Bible and say, oh, no. I found a contradiction. Let, may I finish, please? Yeah. Or are you going to cut me off again? I'm, I'm gonna. Go ahead. I'm gonna yeah, under yeah. your speech say no. And and let, let's let's have you get so out you this one point. Out. Hey, no. Oh well, I'm not gonna cut okay. you off. Yeah, if, real quick. Hang on. I'm okay. gonna let you get that point out. I'm gonna let you um, you know, say say that statement. And then we have had you on the phone. We've given you way longer than any of the other callers. You've been on for mm -hmm. about an hour and twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna let you finish that point. We'll answer it, and then um, we've got to move on. Um, but uh, go ahead. Okay. Thomas, when you asserted that the law of non-contradiction is established by definition only, okay, then it's arbitrary. So then what you were saying is you're using a, you're saying that something in the Bible, okay, is invalid because it, do, it doesn't cohere with a definition, not a universal truth that is independent of conventional labeling or tokens. So all you've simply said is when you say, oh, I found a contradiction in the Bible, what, the reason why it's a problem according to the way you have defined it is it doesn't cohere to your conventional definitions. Now, 
You are absolutely right. No, I, I, I don't think for you... a long time. I just want to oh, say, sorry. finish this up. You yeah, are yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would, it's not fair to everybody else. You've given me a lot of times. I don't think I've been treated fairly, but I want to thank each and each of you, sweet cakes, for having me on. Yeah, and I I would like to thank you for calling in and staying on the line as much as you have. I know that it, it at times was a very heated exchange. Um, I don't know whether I'll be able to persuade you to call. Uh, Back in next week, it'll be, or, or it, weeks in the future, um, next week it'll be Eric and myself, um, uh, and, and, you know, hopefully we can continue having discussions because I do think that there's value to be gained here. Okay. Um, we, we didn't agree on hardly anything, but I do appreciate um, you letting me on and having this debate. I, I agree with you that we didn't agree on hardly anything. So I think we can end on a point of agreement. Okay, you sweet cakes have a good day. All right. All right. You too. Take care. Yes. All right. Oh, my goodness.